I'm Kerry, everybody. Today we're at BBM. It's fantastic to be here out and about in the community, reconnecting with organisations like this that do such important work, you know, supporting some of our most vulnerable families. Uh, I saw firsthand as Minister for COVID-19 response and then following the Auckland floods as Prime Minister, uh, what organisations like this do. I saw just what an enormous benefit they bring to the local community. Uh, and I think that you know one of the reasons that we're doing this now as opposition is uh, we do want to be in a position to better support organisations like this uh, next time we're in government so that they can do the incredible work that they do. Um, we see enormous potential for a greater partnership with community organisations to support uh, local families um, and to really kind of lift up the opportunities that are available to families who at the moment uh, are finding things pretty tough. Uh, it's a really tough part of the economic cycle at the moment uh, and we know that the families that organisations like BBM work with are really, really feeling that. So um, we're here, to, I guess, to say thank you and to provide some moral support uh, but also to just you know, to, to talk through what alternative approaches to funding and support for organisations like this might look like in the future. Uh, so we've, we've had some really good conversation. We've been able to see a bit more about what they do. Um, and this is the sort of approach that you'll see us continuing over the coming months as we continue to get out and about and engage in the local community. And with that, I'm happy to open up for questions on this or any other issues. <laughs> The overall thrust of Winston Peters' AUKUS speech was more consistent with you know, New Zealand's, um, I guess, uh, position, recent position, than, uh, his, than the ones that he did say after his Washington DC, in his Washington DC comments. So I welcome him stepping back a little bit from his previous uh, rush headlong into signing up for AUKUS. Uh, I think that that is a, a, a good thing. You know, we, we said it that, that as government, that we should understand what AUKUS looks like before we even had a discussion about whether that is something that we would want to be part of. And I do think that uh, the current government need to make sure that New Zealanders are included in that conversation. So they need to be clear um, what it is that they're talking about when they're talking about Pillar 2 of AUKUS. We were very clear, Pillar 1, which is the nuclear submarine deals, New Zealand should have no involvement in that. that that's completely inconsistent with our past uh, foreign policy. Uh, it violates our nuclear-free um, approach. We shouldn't be part of that. Having said that, um, it's actually Winston Peters' comments post his speech yesterday that I'm more concerned about. The allegations that he has made against Bob Carr, a senior and well-respected Australian politician, are totally unacceptable. The fact that you've now got someone like Bob Carr taking defamation action against Winston Peters is embarrassing for New Zealand. It shows that Winston Peters has abused his office as Minister of Foreign Affairs. And this now becomes a problem for the Prime Minister, Christopher Luxon. He should stand Winston Peters down immediately. Uh, these sorts of allegations by our Foreign Affairs Minister are unacceptable. They cannot be left unchallenged. Um, and Winston Peters cannot um, execute his duties as Foreign Affairs Minister while he has this hanging over him. The Prime Minister must show leadership. He must show that he has some standards in government for his ministers. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has stepped well outside his brief. He's embarrassed the country. Um, he has created legal risk to the New Zealand government because he has made these comments as our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, and the Prime Minister must do something about that. Through his speech, is he correct that the current government is simply continuing a process that Labour began? As I said, we said that we should understand what AUKUS Pillar 2 looks like and we, we um, let our officials go off and have those conversations about what Pillar 2 actually involves and what it looks like before we would even have a conversation about whether that's something that we would want to be part of. We haven't. Our approach is exactly the same as it was before the election. I think what we've seen from the current government, there was quite a shift in approach. If you look at Winston Peters' comments um, out of the, the Washington meetings, um, he was basically saying that New Zealand was ready to sign up for Pillar 2. Now, he's walked back from that. I think that's a good thing that he's walked back from that, but he never should have said those things in the first place. We've seen a significant change in posture by the New Zealand government since there was a change of government last year. So it is them that has been walking away from the long-standing uh, you know, independent foreign policy that we've had, not us. We've, we've been completely consistent. He took a number of cracks at what he said was the closed-mindedness of Labour and that you were risking foreign policy bipartisanship. What's your response? 
I think Winston Peters has been risking foreign policy by partnership by partisanship, as have other members in the current government, by making sweeping statements um, about you know, New Zealand's willingness to join up to something like AUKUS. Uh, we were very clear. We have to understand what AUKUS Pillar 2 involves before we could even have that conversation. And we need to be upfront with New Zealanders about what that might look like. You know, what exactly is the new technology that New Zealand might want to access through AUKUS Pillar 2? Uh, I've not seen any evidence of that. Uh, so I think that Winston Peters' earlier comments were very premature. I welcome the fact that he's walking back from those. But the overall posture of the government is very different from the posture of the last government. Do you also think Julian has lost the plot? I wasn't in the House last night, so I didn't witness that. Um, I do think it's important that you know, um, all politicians remain respectful in the way they engage themselves in the House. Um, I have been in the House in the past where politicians who have disagreed with one another have ended up having conversations about that after, you know, outside of the formal debating process. Um, I've been involved in debates where you know, members opposite have come and sat next to me and we've ended up having quite a cordial conversation about the debate. And I wouldn't want to say that that should never happen. Um, whether her behaviour was intimidatory, intimidatory or not, I don't know, because of course I wasn't there. Um, I saw some photos that perhaps were um, unflattering, so that really is a matter for the Green Party. What action would you have taken if it was one of your MPs? Well, I'd, I'd want to understand exactly what happened and what their motivations were, um, but you know, I'm, I, let me be very clear: um, intimidatory behaviour in the House is not acceptable. Um, but you know, good conversation and disagreement is actually a legitimate part of the democratic process. But you have to do that in a way that's respectful of all parties. From what you know. Um, I think walking across the chamber in the middle of somebody else's speech and, um, and sort of leaning over them uh, raises some potential issues that I'd want to get to the bottom of, but I'm not going to get involved in that because, of course, that's a, a matter for the Green Party. As the cost of living crisis drags on, how important is it that community-oriented organisations get the support they need to essentially keep the lights on? And what would some of that support look like? I think it's vital. I think there are some long-standing issues here that we were working on in, in government that I think we'll need to continue working on when we're next in government. The stability of funding for community organisations doing this sort of work is far too uncertain. They're often, you know, surviving contract to contract, you know, short-term contracts, some contracts as short as six months. Um, others might be a year or two, but it's not giving them the stability they need to be able to, to really make the investments in local communities that, um, that they should be able to make uh, because they do such amazing work. So that's some unfinished business for us. We want to return to that when we're next in government. Um, but in the meantime, we want to support organisations like this. I think one of the great ironies here is that some of the philanthropists, you know, some of the donors who support organisations like this are actually providing more consistent and reliable funding than government is. Um, I think we've got to do better. Government has to be a better partner um, with these really vital grassroots organisations. Um, we also need to be a bit more trusting sometimes. Um, we need to hand over a bit of power to some of these local community organisations and just tell them to get on with it. There has to be accountability, but that accountability shouldn't be so tightly bundled that they can't actually do the job we're asking them to do. Um, look, I'm a, a big believer in the nothing ab about us without us uh, mantra that uh, the disability community have long been promoting. I think it's really important when you're making decisions about those with disabilities that they're involved in that conversation and they get to have their say. Uh, the disability community in New Zealand far too often feel like things are being done to them rather than with them. They've got a legitimate perspective. It is their disabilities uh, that they need support with. They should have a say on that. They should feel empowered in this process. Cutting them out of the decision-making process isn't the way to do it. You've been critical of the former Disabilities Issues Minister. Via an OIA, it's now clear it was the Ministry which first used the massages, pedicures, haircuts line. In light of this, how confident are you with the Ministry's ability to do this job? I'm concerned about those allegations, and I think that if the government have evidence of that, they should produce them. Uh, the reality is all of this funding gets signed off, and so if money was spent on those things, it was signed off. I'd also just caution around language. You know, um, the difference between a pedicure and podiatry treatment, um, there can be a fine line there. And actually, when you look at the physically demanding work that carers working with people with disabilities get, 
um, you know, I, I think we should actually be quite accommodating of the fact that they will have physical needs. The difference between a massage and physiotherapy, for example, um, they're both forms of physical treatment for someone who may be in pain because of the physical work that they are doing. Um, and that's legitimate. That's the sort of support that government should be providing to people who are doing this really tough, caring work. I made it very clear before the last election that we'd worked with Winston Peters before and we would not be doing so again. I don't believe that working with Winston Peters leads to stable government and in the last 24 hours he's given us another very clear illustration of that. Before the last election I said that if Winston Peters held the balance of power it would be a national government. Not one day has gone past where I've regretted that decision. Um, I do not believe that Winston Peters should be in government. I certainly don't believe that he should be the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And I think that his behaviour in the last 24 hours shows that the Prime Minister must now do something about that. Um, having a Foreign Affairs Minister of New Zealand defaming a senior and respected politician from our closest friend and closest neighbour is totally unacceptable. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Cheers. Thanks.